larger when I grow up. Want to travel the world. Want that everyone would be healthy. Want to fly in a hot air balloon. Want that everyone would be happy. Want to be able to turn into a fox. Want to make it so that love is everywhere. Want to be gifted a star and be called by my name. I want that everyone would wake up and never fall asleep. Want that there would be no more suffering. Want to learn to fly. A dream is a reflection of your highest needs. If you are to some extent connected with these needs, through them, you can unlock your dream. It's just that our society doesn't support this. We don't need dreamers, we need consumers. And the society encourages us to become good quality consumers. To go to work that we don't really like, to make money that we don't really need and to buy goods with this money, the goods we don't really need. People are lost, precisely because there is no vector guiding them through life. This global vector for me is the realization of one's dream. Because a dream is the highest aspiration that exists in me or any man. And the more you dedicate your life to your dream, the more you accomplish your highest aspirations. And then all other aspirations, other aspects that are important, the emotional part, the physical, material, your body, interaction with social life, a good living environment and everything else, becomes a subsidiary to you fulfilling your dream. Then it changes so that you can eat to live and not vice versa. And this dream, this very flow I mentioned, the one you are flowing in, it is the one vector that defines your life strategically and points it forward. And then every moment in time, you know where you should go. Here is where the dream is. And there is a way from that dream. If you look forward, you're always at the beginning of the path. Having a dream is extremely important for a person because it's a guiding point, a very important and necessary guide. Speaking in terrestrial terms, it helps you understand in which direction to walk. The ideal model, the ideal final result. When your aspirations in the material, spiritual, mental, emotional, any plane of existence, your desires, these aspirations should be in the cross sections. And if you are able to formalize these aspirations, that is, if you understand what kind these aspirations are, and put them in a single chain, your aspirations, like a compass needle, will point you to your goals, at least to the nearest ones. Your correctly aligned goals will point you to your dream. And when realizing your aspirations with great comfort, motivation and pleasure, you move towards your dream. Realizing your goals, you're moving towards your dream. It's better to choose bigger goals because they are more difficult to miss. The bigger your goals are, the more global your dream is because your dream sees your goals lined up in one line behind your aspirations. They should be bigger than your desires and your dream must be bigger than your goals for you to see it all the time. The route is interesting when it's complicated. The route is interesting when there is risk, when you constantly go beyond the boundaries. If you are true to yourself, the world would present you maximum opportunity. That means that everything will work out. Any dream comes to us with the powers to implement it. We're talking about a dream, any dream, if it is described, drawn, visible, audible. A dream is something that holds me together with all the doubts. For me, the dream is not what I dream of. To me, a dream is the space where I am. 
In this sense, it is the space inside me and outside me. And so, it's enough to simply remember of what guides me, to recall the purpose, all that is happening for me, to remember my dream, and everything else becomes irrelevant. It's all there, but simply ceases to matter. The difficulty is in remembering that. I believe the main objective of our time is to learn how to love, respect, trust, believe in ourselves and take risks. To always be making an effort to go beyond. Step out, try, take a chance, feel, finish. Everything is there, you know? And yet, you're doing it. Remember that you're loved, respected and trusted, regardless of whether you make it happen or not. Fear the comfort. Comfort sucks in like a swamp. Comfort zone is a specific category. It relates to the space of life. In life we fence around a space that's comfortable for us. These interactions are comfortable for us. These are not comfortable. These conditions are comfortable. These are not comfortable. The younger the person is, the more energy he has, the easier it is for him to cross over from one situation to the other. For example, to sleep on the floor or sleep in a tent. There is a saying that life begins outside the boundary of your comfort zone. It is very important to come outside of it. And with age, we have less energy and people are trying to maintain their comfort more and more and reduce, reduce, reduce. But if we are talking about a dream, it is beyond the border, outside the border of the comfort zone. In order to realize the dream, you have to present wholly to the act. And it is your full presence that does not fit into any frames. As your dream becomes bigger and bigger, and it fills your external space, it is already guiding you. You do not need to decide, do I need that or do I not? It just carries you. You no longer jump up in the morning because of, all right, it's time to get up. But because your dream rises you and throws you out of bed, it becomes your driving force. A dream is when you want to create something. In my opinion, the dream is equal to a creation of something or the creation. Gogol said that there is no higher pleasure than the pleasure to create. You achieve satisfaction only when you have created something. And these fruits have brought joy to people. Not you, but others. Because you can light up only when you see the spark in the eyes of others. It's impossible to create a dream. It will be someone else's dream. If you do not understand the one who creates this dream, that is first. To do this, you must get to know who you are. Everything depends on what you are, what you think, and what you aspire to. According to the traditions of the Wicholi Indians, there are seven sides of the world. Four we more or less know, the fifth is up, sixth is down, and the seventh inward. The seventh side is the hardest. So the main things come from the heart. But how do they get there? The paths can be different. It seems that happiness is akin to entropy. All aspire to it, and it is constantly slipping away. But happiness is a solution. Happiness is not something you possess. Happiness is being in a moment. The last three years I've been doing only what I want. And I'm doing it because I cannot not do this. It's like breathing. In fact, when you find something that's yours, it becomes very natural. You stop the endless reflection and you don't even think, what's the meaning of life? Is it a gnat or could it be this? All thoughts mental process of inventing, it just goes away. Your life becomes very consistent. You just get up in the morning and you know what to do, but not in the sense that you have a fixed plan. You just know the direction, you know where the compass is, you know where the needle is, and you just start moving. 
the path builds up and falls. I have a small chance to change the world for the better. If each of us will think about what they can do around themselves, then things start to happen. It is not important how to create a fund, it is important that it has some meaning. Many can set up a fund and talk about it non-stop. The important thing is that people need us. As a fund, a registered organization, we have not existed for long. But I can say that much has been done, and we've started a lot of programs. Serious programs on systematic changes. To change the attitude towards these people. To change the relationship and then implement more systematic changes. My dreams, Sonia, eight years old. I can do much, model the world by a dream, give mercy by a silent prayer and to think to instantly create by the power of thought, or maybe slower the mosaic of my meta-galaxies. All people dream, even those who say they don't like to dream. The more people dream, the happier they are. But I think that for dreams to come true, you need to be able to dream right. After all, a dream is the model of the desired future in three levels. The first, imagination. The second, desire. The third, the mental stitching of events. To dream right is to properly take into account all existing connections of yourself as a person who dreams with the world. And to understand what new connections are needed. And then to stitch together the events. And you need to see how the stitching affects the connections already existing in the world. I too love to dream. I dream of the future where I can talk, can sing songs, can do everything myself. Where I will have a lot of friends and, and work I love. I will help people to properly stitch the events. I will be a dream consultant. I believe that we live in a perfect world. This world was created for us and we live in what we are, in what we are capable of. Because you are what you want, what you want to be, that's what you are. So I find it strange when people say, oh, I'd like to be, um, I'd like, well, why aren't you becoming it? The reasons fall apart. All this why they really didn't become someone like this or that. There is always a possibility. There is always a way. There is always some kind of a personal story when you can change your life. So for me, I think the world is absolutely fair. The world is absolutely perfect. We live here in this world. It is certainly in our power to make the world better. As soon as we'll make it better, we will live in this new world. And it too will seem ideal to us. Your future determines your present. By understanding who you want to be or what you want to do in the future, you will zoom in on it in your present. And this is how your dream will affect your day's agenda. A man says, in my life there's neither a white stripe or black, then white, then black. There are no black and white stripes in life. There is one stripe, and from its edges to the right and to the left and to the horizon is all black. And a man walking on this white walks into the black, then pops back again into the white, crosses back into the black, comes back again. So there he has either white or black. So if you centralize yourself, if you create order for yourself, if you define your goals, values and dreams, then that's it, only white. For instance, I'd really like to get a spinning wheel with a Gorodesk painting. Just an example, right? Because I want to, I wish to create a show of Slavic life, which will stand at the Museum of Slavic Life, who will be part of the Museum of Slavic Mythology, because there will be displays of way of life, cosmogony, tradition, history and so on. 
This museum will be on the territory of the Slavic Kremlin. Slavic Kremlin is a place which is not only architectural ensemble, but what is significant in its substantive work. Because there will be festivals, folk festivals, conferences, round tables and so on. In order that, as a result of these events, our compatriots, at least, or the entire world as a maximum, would know what a magical, most ancient, most effective tradition has existed 8,000 years on this earth. Thus, I want a spinning wheel. Many children say, I want to become a doctor, and they're told, oh, to become a doctor? Do you know how much you need to know? And you can see yourself, how badly you're doing. And he's like, yeah, I'm sitting in Deep Valley. I will never climb to the top of this scary peak. And I think that if I wanted to be a doctor, it means that I already possess something important in terms of what being a doctor is. Empathy, aspiration. There will be some key moments to achieve. You don't care what trials will arise on this path. But if you believe in it, then everything will be nice. I clearly remember an episode from my childhood. My father and I were walking from the kindergarten. He was holding my hand, telling me something vivaciously, or I was telling him some of my own experiences. And there was a man walking in front of us who took the last cigarette out of the pack, crumpled up the pack and tossed it away. And my father, without interrupting our conversation as we reached the pack, picked it off the ground and carried it in his hands until we reached the bus stop where there was a bin. He just binned it in silence. He did not stop this man. He did not pass by. This moment in time had really lodged deep into my memory. And this just confirms that each of us can do something better on this earth. And when passers-by will walk behind us, they will not see the filth on this path. It's cool, to be honest. You do what you love. People see you are bursting from doing what you love. They are inspired and also dare to do the same. If everyone will do that, everything will change. I think that when you're changing yourself, everything inside somehow changes. Certain people become attracted to you. The events take place. Oh, it seems everything has changed. First you open your dream inside, like some kind of idea. Then you start to realize that this dream is not an idea in your head, but a flow, a certain energy, a certain movement. The more you give yourself to that dream, dissolve in it, it starts to run your life. And when it runs your life, it begins to penetrate all aspects of it. To follow this dream doesn't mean giving up, for example, and going away somewhere. To follow this dream means to learn to realize your dream in all aspects, in all interactions, interacting with your child, your beloved, your work, your employees, and even with just passers-by, any people, your neighbors. On the path to the dream, a man requires support, insurance, insurance in hazardous areas, so that if he falls, he does not break at any point, but survives and he's able to get up. By the way, I understand success not as an achievement of some elements, but the ability to get up. Successful people are ones who get up more times than they fall. And out of these, the tasks arise to know how to fall and to learn how to rejoice in the fall. It is extremely important to use the most important motive in your life, your own dream. And if you're in the cross sections of your desires, goals and your dreams, you're filled to the top with motivations. And even if your hands and feet are tied or you're stopped, you don't need anything because you're going to move, move and move. And the brighter and swifter you're moving there, like a vertical, the more resources cling to you, because what is important and interesting to you becomes clear to the people and the universe, friends, comrades and colleagues and partners, because your life makes sense. It has a meaning and it is therefore useful to you and the people and your family and friends and the universe.
It is important to be not just curious, but inquisitive and observant in life. Because every day we get a lot of gifts. The sun had risen, and why isn't that a gift? And the stars were lit, and why do they exist in the world? And some of our internal problems include comparing ourselves with someone and trying to evaluate ourselves on, well, in comparison to someone or something. Again, some external parameters or some internal parameters. When a person discovers his splendor and connects with it, then he has no problem and no need to compare himself to anything. Or as I jokingly say, cucumber is no worse than the poplar. These are simply incomparable things. People are very different. And my dream is to ensure that every person discovers themselves. When they open up, connect to their magnificence, their life, their manifestations, become pure creativity. When a person connects with themselves, he can create his life every moment. The following story is the mission, and everyone is talking about the mission. They want to know about the mission. At the same time, they do not even have a formulated desire. They want to know about the mission. Their mission is the only thing that is inherited by their heirs. The mission, not possessions, and the mission always lies beyond your life. How do you know if you fulfilled your mission on earth or not? If you are alive, it goes on. But when you're gone, you either had it or you had not. And maybe your mission will be shaped or made purposeful by your children or your grandchildren. You're not even in a position to formulate your own mission. But if your aspirations lead to your goals, goals to the dream, then the dream will definitely point you towards your mission. And so on, it will be remembered for many, many decades, centuries or even millennia after you're gone. Because you flew so brightly, moved so fast, so beautifully, so usefully, for this world, it is impossible to forget about it. We all have a mission. It's a big word. Some can have a grand one, some smaller, but it's still grandiose. Everyone has something to do, a cause. I, for example, am a very happy person because I found this cause early enough now. Because I'm good at it, it's easy for me to do this even if it requires a lot of time and is energy consuming. After you're gone, it's not going to be something like, yes, I built a house, I planted a tree, but that you have passed life on to people, and these people will go with this life and will cherish it. Then when I open myself to not just a dream, but the value to follow a dream, the presence of a dream, following a dream, enriches and transforms all qualities of life, all aspects of life. When I have made this discovery, it really fired me up. When I just shared this with people, they were very inspired. The list of values is similar for most, but among these values are the highest values, the kind that people at least know, but not everyone recognizes them as absolute values for themselves. Among them, in my opinion, there are love, trust, realization. And when your dream touches these aspects, that's when it's a dream at the highest level. Then at the end of this life, when looking back, if you see that you've dedicated your life to this, to have more love, more implementation, more opportunities for discovery, interaction and intimacy in your life and the lives of other people, then you can understand what kind of life that was, and if it is to be given away, then it's the best you are giving it for. And it is this, that is creativity, this is pleasure, this is drive, this is energy. That's all you have in your life. I think the dream is always the first. I have a dream that when I grow up, I will save the world. I really want to fly. Find dinosaur bones. I wish to be a cop and catch cars that don't obey the rules. Swim in the swimming pool. I want to build a city with robots. To be a savior. 
become a samurai, become a paleontologist. I want to meet Spider-Man very much. Become a builder. Goal, joy.